explain over the years what the question of migrants. We used to come here uh, to get food stuff yeah. from the South African Council. Yeah. Uh, the South African Council of Churches gave uh, some of our colleagues, our migrants, community accommodation. This indeed is a fulfillment of the scriptures, which says, You saw me when I was hungry, and you fed me. You saw me when I had no shelter, you gave me shelter. You saw me with the no clothes, and you gave me clothes. It is a fulfillment of the scriptures. So we appreciate the work that uh, the South African Council of Churches is doing. And we also appreciate this dialogue that it has started to say, let us engage on these issues. Because the reality is, there is conflict in our communities. The reality is, you have many migrants in South Africa who are not documented. But how does then the church respond? We prefer as activists to use the word undocumented as to oppose to the word illegal immigrants. Because we do not believe as activists that there is anyone illegal in Africa. But one find themselves in one territory uh, is not documented. I'm a Mabena myself. I'm a Mabena from Zimbabwe. My brothers, my parents are in Wamdana. They are South Africans. When I'm standing with them, especially you see that uh, we are the same. They might speak in the Veda, which is a bit different from the one that I speak, but we are blood brothers. Because our ancestors left here and what we call today much better in Zimbabwe. So how does my brother from Wamdana Stand up with a placard and say, Mabuto Mabena must go back. My brother is a king in Wamta and would be there on Saturday, Wamchegeche, commemorating one of our late kings, King Islam, just outside Pretoria. All of us among the very Ramos. How then does that brother stand up and say, You are a foreign? It's not possible. We have the Tosa speaking in Zimbabwe. They trust their rules in this state. Around 1995, 1996, 1997, they were assisted in Zimbabwe. Those wanted to come back, and they were given documents to come back. To South Africa, and today they are South Africans by descent. The Tosa speaking. How does a Tosa speaking person born in Eastern Cape who lives in Johannesburg carry a placard against the Tosa speaking who is born in Zimbabwe in Mbembezi, they are together in Johannesburg and say, You must believe. How does a Sutu born in South Africa fight? They are Sutu brother who was born in Rwanda in Zimbabwe. Because they are one people. How does a vendor on the other side of Limbok fight their brother who was born on the other side of Limbok? This is why there were special permits for the people around that area in Limbok to say you can cross do your shopping, uh, come and work in the farms and go back, they are under one chip. How then do you stand up <laughs> and they fight another vendor? I'm simply saying we are one people. I pay my allegiance. I'm born in Zimbabwe. My king, whom I pay allegiance to, is South African King Makosoke II. He's my brother. How does he chase me out of South Africa? How do I chase him out of Zimbabwe? But how did we get here? Where you have the discourse in South Africa, which says the Zimbabwe exemption permit must not be renewed. And how did we get here to an extent that we come to South Africa 
to apply for permits. Was the strike for national liberation? Was his key objective to say that every person in Africa will flock to South Africa? That was not the objective of the strike for national liberation. I always tell comrades that Zebra, the armed wing of Zap, led Toy Toy from Algeria. It was Zipra that taught MK to a toy, which MK then perfected it. Zipra and the MK fought together in the strike for national liberation. But the objective of the strike for national liberation was that when we are all liberated, we would flock into one country. The objective was if a South African for one reason or another, wants to go and stay in Malawi in the long run, it shouldn't be a problem. <coughs> if a Zimbabwean wants to go and live in DRC, it shouldn't be a problem. But why are we flocking to South Africa, <coughs> all of us? And the answer is simple. And the Kwame Krumah speaks to this question. That when we gained our liberation, our freedom. We gained the political freedom, not economic freedom. Mm -hmm. And the Kwame Kruma characterizes this as neo-colonial state. Why is it a neo-colonial state? We have our black presidents, black cabinet ministers, we have our national anthem. Uh, but the economy is not in our hands. In Zimbabwe, which South Africa is going through as well, a hands wave in this gallery. We abandoned what we call national planning. For the first decade of our liberation, we did well economically. Because our economy was based on national planning. But the wheels came off 1991 when we adopted neoliberal policies, economic structural adjustment program. It was then that we saw companies closing down. We were told by the then Minister of Finance, Bernard Chitzero, that we needed to tighten our belts. Indeed, we tightened our belts. But the political leadership did not. Corruption flourished. Nepotism. When companies closed down, people of <coughs> low skill who could not survive under that environment had to cross to South Africa. But before that, I'm from a region. Because I heard the pastor here talking about the <coughs> Comrade Christian that is related to Comrade Christian, he is actually his auntie. Comrade Christian fought alongside the Zipra in Wanki in 1967. A few days ago, I was posting what he had written about the, uh, that operation in Wanki and in 1967 and how they ended up in Botswana after being arrested. And it's important to note this, that part of the problem in Africa, and particularly in Zimbabwe, which we do not dialogue about, and then we are quick to say, no, Mabuto Mabena is not documented, this one is not documented, let them go and they fight their government. Mm. The current president, Emerson Mandela, when he was Minister of Intelligence in the Prime Minister's office, what did they plan from Marare to Bulawayo? In that plan, there was Joshua Mkabu the leader of Zap was then Minister of Home Affairs. When they arrived in Bulawayo, Nangaba proceeded to a farm where part of the MK military hardware was stored. 
for the struggle to liberate South Africa from apartheid. Zap was accused of keeping military hardware to stage a coup against the Mugabe regime. What then happened after was a genocide in my region where over 50,000 people were massacred. And the Kukrawundi operation made the point that it operates along the military corridor where MK was supposed to use from Zambia to South Africa in the struggle against the apartheid. This is the region where I come from, the region of my development, where people perished. What option did they have? They had to run away. When we adopted neoliberal policies in 1991, what options did people have, poor people, working people? They had to look for greener pastures. As it has been observed by one revolutionary, that in a country with a high unemployment, like South Africa, unemployment is rising. In a country with high unemployment, in a country where there's high concentration of migrants, people fight. And the scapegoats become the undocumented migrants. It happened in Ivory Coast in the 1960s when they were fighting the Sudanese because they thought that it would drive the Sudanese uh, Ivory Coast was economically going to prosper. It is therefore expected as we dialogue on this question. Mm -hmm. Because poor people from who are migrants <coughs> will get into poor communities, unemployment is high, we are going to an election in 2024, court was are all over, electricity crisis, and then the blame is undocumented migrants. Mm -hmm. And then the fight begins. That's, that, that's, that's. And then the question is, what then becomes the position of the church? Uh, what, what one person was saying to me,